Thanks for tuning in to Bourbon Battles. We're so happy to have you. Hey, my name's Joe, and we've got a really cool episode for you today. Hey, if you haven't heard of this, it's getting rave reviews everywhere on the internet. It's Jim Beam, 7-year-old, 90-proof whiskey. We're going to talk about that and if it's better than my favorite, Budget Sippers. So stick with us. Right, if you know me very well, you know I love Jim Beam. I love Booker's. I love most of the little books. I love Jim Beam Single Barrel, Jim Beam Bonded, Jim Beam White Label, Jim Beam Double Oak, you name it. I love Jim Beam. So Jim Beam has come out with a new product, right? Um, really interesting, right? Everybody is so busy coming out with these really expensive products Nobody's doing things like this, right? Jim Beam's come out with this super budget-friendly $23 seven-year. They call it Jim Beam Black. Now, you might say, I've heard of that, right? Jim Beam Black is this stuff right here that they just say Jim Beam Black extra aged. It's not the same thing. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. So this product, which you may have seen, is just a couple, a little, just a couple dollars cheaper, right? Let's let's compare the two to make sure we understand what we're looking at. Jim Beam Black, the old product, which I don't know that they've discontinued it, is Jim Beam Black Extra Age Bourbon. It's 86 proof with no age statement, but I think the consensus was around five years old, if I'm not mistaken. So. Along comes this Jim Beam Black. It's confusing, right? Seven-year age statement and 90 proof. So they've upped the age and they've upped the proof. So the first thing I want to do is see if this new product is better than this old product. So let's check it out. I might as well have some of this. So I've been sipping on this just a little bit today. This was filmed on Derby Day. So I've already filmed a little bit today and today's going to be a long day. So, right out of the gate, I'll tell you the nose is infinitely better on the new product. You don't get the, the same alcohol content. The new product doesn't compare. It's miles above this. And I like this. This is good stuff. There's nothing at all wrong with, I really like that. Wow. Yeah, the, the new is certainly better, but this is something you need on your shelf if you're a whiskey drinker at all. This is fantastic. So this is better. So, hey, so this, people are saying this is the new best bourbon, budget bourbon out there. Um, what is it really? Is it Baker's watered down a little bit? Is it bonded watered down a little bit? Is it better than Knob Creek? Is it a better value than Booker's? Ah, whoa. So Booker's is literally four times the price, right? It's higher proof, but wow, some pretty bold statements. So I really want to dig into this. Jim Beam, I think has hit a home run with this. Um, I don't think that you're going to see this on secondary markets necessarily you might for a short period of time you right now i don't know that i mean maybe you can maybe you can't go into the first liquor store you see and find one of these uh some liquor stores haven't even heard of them yet um that i got this at kroger so so as i drink through this one of the things that i want to determine right it's going to sit up here on the shelf just like this, right? I've had this Jim Beam Black for a while. You can see how much I've drank. I've tasted it a few times. That might actually be my second bottle. Here's a better example, right? This Baker 7, right? And we're going to we're gonna compare it to Baker 7 next. Um, I've had this for a good while also, but, you know, that's actually, I drank quite a bit of that for me, right? There's a lot to choose from in this room. So I like the Baker 7. Now, the ba the older Bakers that came out last year, the 13, is one of the best whiskeys I've ever had. Um, so keep that in mind, but so we're going to compare it to the Baker seven, uh, this new Jim Beam black product. We're also going to compare it to Jim Beam bonded, depending on where you're at. That's a little harder to find hundred proof, obviously bottled and bond. We're going to 
We're going to compare it to the 100 proof Knob Creek, right? I know there's a little more proof there. Uh, and my favorite budget sippers are Wild Turkey 101 and Evan Williams Bottom and Bond. We're going to compare them to those. So I know there's another uh, channel out there, SLB Drinks, right? Um, if you're watching this, you probably watch them too, and fellow Hoosiers. So, hey, if you guys from SLB are watching this, uh, help your old buddy Joe out and have him over to, uh, let's do an episode together. So they actually, uh, Trenton tricked his dad on there uh, to drink this new product, Blind, against Wild Turkey 101, uh, which is interesting because, they, you know, they love that Wild Turkey 101 in it. It beat it, right? So that is a very bold statement. We'll get down to that. Um, it's the last whiskey I'm going to compare it to. Uh, Wild Turkey 101 and Evan Williams Bottom and Bond are two of my absolute favorite budget whiskeys. They'll always be have a place here. And from what I've tasted of this bad boy now, the Jim Beam Black 7-year, it will always be on the table. It's ready to rock and roll. So, all right, we've tried it with the old Jim Beam Black, which we like. I determined I like the old Jim Beam Black. It's very good, extra aged. Um, the new is better. So let's now try it with Baker 7, right? Baker 7 is a fantastic bottle. It's two or three times, two times at least the price, right? It's 107 proof. So it's got quite a bit more proof on it, right? So let's keep that in mind. It is a single barrel product. I do feel like the bottle that I currently have is a good single barrel. Um, but coming from Coming from Jim Beam, right? They're all going to be so similar. It's going to be hard to taste the difference, right? Their, their consistency is amazing there. Uh, seven years old, seven years old. Double the price. So let's see. Would I rather have two bottles of this or one bottle of this? Let's get into it. Huh. Now, I got this fruit note on there on the bakers that. It was fantastic. Hmm. So to me, on taste alone, right, Baker's takes that by the slimmest of margins. There's something in there that I really like. It's got this punch of sweet fruitness that I don't, that I really like in, in a Jim Beam product when it comes through. You don't get that very often. So this one, Baker's is going to take it. But by the slimmest of margins, it's pretty close, right? It's just a little bit better. So now we're left with the decision. Two bottles of this or one bottle of this? Hmm. For a collector, it's a no-brainer. you got to have both. But for, you know, if you got five or six bottles, buy two of these. Don't buy one of these pretty simple and you're going to have enough money in your pocket to get a sandwich on the way home after you buy two of these. So love this Baker seven, love the 13 year old stuff. Um, I still do not have a bottle of that. If one of our viewers wants to help me procure one of the older Bakers, I would absolutely love that. It's one of my favorite products ever. It's what I've had is absolutely amazing. Gosh, this stuff right here is so stinking good. So I haven't seen anybody compare it to the Jim Beam Bonded, right? So Jim Beam Bonded is very special. I, I love Jim Beam Bonded. So we know it's at least four years old because it's bottled and bond. It's 100 proof. I don't know that there's an age statement on here, but I'm guessing it's that four or five year old whiskey. It is, if I'm not mistaken, it's probably right there in that same price point within you know 10 or 15 percent so you know close enough right so let's see what's better now i'm going to tell you right now uh unless you know where to get the jim beam bonded you're going to have a, you could have a hard time finding that i know how to get it no problem in central indiana southern indiana um and i think the jim beam black seven years is going to be much easier to find that nose on that jim beam bonded is just so good Man, I love that stuff. That bottle's been there for a long time, but my goodness, I need to get another one of those so there's a backup and one of them can be drank. It's so good. 
the bonnet is so good. I love it. I love it. I love it. You need one of these. Like, so when we compare this to the Jim Beam Black, the Bakers, the uh, Bonded, the Knob Creek, we compare it to Jim Beam Single Barrel, which is another one that's a little tough to find. We could easily compare it to Booker's, right? It's just so hard to compare things that are so drastically different in proof. But if you think about it, Booker's is really about the same age of this stuff. So I is this Booker's that's younger? Or I'm sorry, a lower proof? I think it is. Um, look, and I talk about it all the time. You don't have to have crazy high proof stuff. I'm not a cowboy. I don't have to have 130 proof. I can enjoy 90 proof bourbon. I can enjoy 100 proof bourbon. And I can enjoy 130 proof bourbon, right? So I got. if I had to pick a winner here, and I was to drink these blind, I would pick the new Jim Beam Black product. It's better than the Jim Beam Bonded, and I love this stuff. So, wow. Kudos to you, Jim Beam. You, that just scored bonus points for me because I love that stuff. So, one of my favorite whiskeys. This will always be on my bar. So, I always talk, people always say, hey, you know, I'm going to go, you know, what should I drink when I'm out at a bar? I'm like, you can buy, you can get a pour of Knob Creek at any bar in America. Like, I go to Applebee's and get a pour of Knob Creek. You cannot go wrong with this stuff, guys. This is amazing whiskey at an amazing price. It is a little bit more expensive than the new Jim Beam Black. So, they, the proofs are different, right? Ten proof points difference. You know, these Knob Creeks are everywhere with store picks. If you go somewhere that has a try it before you buy it, policy on their store picks always try the knob creeks some of those are amazing now i do think that there's very little fluctuation but every once in a while you'll you'll run across an absolute stunning home run so knob creek back in the day when i'd keep three or four bottles of whiskey around this has been there since ever ever since i've been drinking whiskey right i started drinking jim beam white label i should have had one of those out here to compare it but i know this is much better um there's nothing wrong with Jim Beam White Label. I'll drink it neat. I don't have any problem with that. That was the first whiskey that I ever really drank. I drank some of that stuff in college when I wasn't supposed to be drinking. When I progressed and actually maybe had a couple bucks in my pocket to buy a good whiskey, it was Knob Creek. I've had a bottle of Knob Creek forever. My wife and I stopped at Jim Beam on our way to get married in Tennessee and bought a bottle of Knob Creek and had it engraved with our stuff on it. Um... We just had our 10th wedding anniversary. We should have opened it for that. But um, stick around to our 25th and we'll open it. You can come try some. It'll be 25-year-old bottle of Jim Beam. Man, that nose on that Knob Creek. Man, it's, this stuff is so good. Um, I, I've said it in a couple episodes recently. I have a table back here that has things that I have multiple bottles of. So that's the stuff. If I just want to pour, right, I don't want to taste. I don't want anything anything over there is up for grabs, right? I'm not trying to save it, right? Other things, you know, like, I, I don't know, there's a, bottles everywhere, right? Uh, 2XO bottle over there, really enjoy. I don't want to drink that all the way down because if I have a guest over, I want him to be able to, him or her, be able to sample it, right? Knob Creek's not one I'm ever worried about. Uh, getting another one of uh, there, there was a half gallon of Knob Creek over there for a long time and has since gone. If that tells you anything, um, if Knob Creek is on the table, it, I go to it more than anything. And believe it or not, there's no Evan Williams bottle and bottle on the table because it didn't get replaced. Although I have a bottle, I opened a bottle just for this episode. Man, that. The nose is better on the new Jim Beam. Man, so we're splitting hairs here. If I have to, I'm, I'm not even going to pick one, right? Because they're the same thing. I probably prefer the Knob Creek because it's got a little more proof to it. If you're somebody that really likes the proof, like me, um, did the Knob Creek, right? Buy the Knob Creek. It's a little higher proof. But if you're newer to whiskey, buy the Jim Beam 7-year. Uh until you grow into that proof, right? It doesn't, th this stuff, that just blows my mind. I would have thought that I'd have said Knob Creek is a lot better.
I do think it's better. The peanuts, the, the creamy peanut butter notes that I get from Jim Beam shine through more on the Jim Beam Black. Wow. $23 bottle of whiskey. I didn't know that there would ever be a $23 bottle of whiskey that I would say can stand up to Knob Creek. Now, I do prefer the Knob Creek. Don't get me wrong. I, I do prefer it, but it is, it, it's, it's so stinking close. I get, I, I appreciate that a little bit more proof, right? And that's the only reason. Wow. Holy mackerel. So I want to say this, right? If you are an executive Jim Beam, because I know you guys sit around your board meetings and you've looked at YouTube and you said, okay, how's our new product doing? And you found this and you know, Hey, as you guys are sitting there watching me right now and probably laughing like, Hey, this, this hillbilly dipshit from Indiana, Hey, he might be on to something, right? He, he's figured some stuff out. Um, contact me. Hey, there's my email address right there. Shoot me an email. I'd love to talk to you, Jim Beam. Let's, uh, yeah, you can bring me on as a, Taste tester. So, my propensity to Jim Beam. So, people ask me all the time, what's your favorite bourbon? Uh, it's, I shy away from that question whenever possible. Uh, I would rather tell you what brands are my favorite. Um, and I say the same thing all the time. My two favorite brands of whiskey are Jim Beam and Maker's Mark. Maker's Mark probably just barely, barely takes it be preferred over Jim Beam because I like some of the sweet profiles, right? Um, Jim Beam is what I cut my teeth on. Um, love Jim Beam. Jim Beam is, look, J Jim Beam's the number two selling whiskey in the world, right? As far as I know, right? Jack Daniels is number one. Jim Beam's number two. Nobody else is even close. Uh, I think Maker's Mark is number three. Maybe that's just an America and it's bourbon, but man, uh, this, it's been a while since I've been excited about something. Like, this is a, like, I love budget whiskeys. I'm sick and tired of this bullshit. Um, I found a whiskey I really liked the other day. It's $172. I'm like, I think I'm actually going to buy that. I'm, I want to slap myself in the mouth, right? $172 for a bottle of whiskey. What does this come to? But it's a special occasion thing, right? I bought a $36 cigar the other day to try for a special occasion I have coming up next week. Um, whiskey's gotten out of hand. All, everything is 60, 70, 80 dollars, and hardly any of it's as good as this. Let that sink in. If you've watched this and you've made it to this, this far in the video, let that sink in. Hardly any of the whiskey on the market at 60, 70, 80 dollars is as good as that. You know, when we talk about budget whiskeys, right? You know me, you know my favorites are Evan Williams and Wild Turkey. You can put early times in this, but. I very rarely talk about early times much because it's so hard to find in my market, right? So let's go to Evan Williams Bottled and Bond. I've blinded this against so many different things. This won our budget Bottled and Bond tournament. This, it, it beat Jim Beam Bonded in that tournament. Um, but Jim, this beat Jim Beam Bonded. So we're in for a surprise. We were in for a real treat here to see what's what, what's what. Who's who in the canoe, as Chad would say. Um so I love this stuff. This is cheaper than the Jim Beam by about ten dollars. So when you're talking twenty, you know, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, fifteen, you know, you know, when you're talking seven, eight, nine dollars cheaper, it's a lot cheaper, right? Heaven Hill makes a great product, and the similarities between Heaven Hill and Jim Beam are very deep, right? With that fire and the yeast strain and all that. And we can talk about that at another time because this is getting pretty long in the tooth, but. Uh, you know, I love this stuff. This stuff routinely beats, not just for me, for people I invite here, this stuff routinely beats Blanton's. Let that sink in. This is better whiskey than Blanton's. And I'm going to go ahead and say it. This is better whiskey than Blanton's. So let's get into this, Evan Williams. You know, wow. They're different. They're just, I don't know. The Evan Williams is better to me. But I think that's because my palate has a propensity to that. It's just barely better, right? They're very, very close. You know, it's almost like I don't even prefer one, or, one over the other. They're just different. But if I could only have one, I would probably take the Evan Williams. So 
that being said, wow, wow, Jim Beam, wow, because I love this stuff. This is something I'll never be without. Um, I just told you I had to open a bottle, but it was here. Um, something else I should have put here. In fact, I'm going to pause this video and I'm going to insert it right now. So I grabbed another bottle, right? I should have thought of this all along, but we're going to compare it to this stuff right here, right? This is actually allocated in some places. I hear from other places outside of Indiana. This is very hard to get your hands on. Not the case in Indiana. So I actually like this. I like it for different reasons. Those grape notes, those uh, really super sweet notes you get from Buffalo Trace. It's just a contradiction. It's totally different than Jim Beam or Heaven Hill. Wow. So if this can stand up to Buffalo Trace as well, and you're watching this, and you're a Buffalo Trace yeah. fan, this is this, this, this would be high praise. They're so different. Yes, Buffalo Trace is so good. I, I forget about it so often. I prefer the Jim Beam. Um, that does not surprise me. Jim Beam 7, black, better than Buffalo Trace for me. Um, I'd say that if we polled 100 people, more people would prefer the Buffalo Trace. It's easier to drink. It's got some sweet notes. Uh, my, for, for me and my palate, I prefer the Jim Beam. But I think overall, Buffalo Trace would take the cake. This has kind of been my jam lately when I go out, right? I go to a bar, and this drives me crazy, right? I go to a bar. What kind of whiskey do you have? Oh, all kinds. They have no idea, right? Um, drives me absolutely bonkers. So I, when they say that, I usually say, give me a Knob Creek or a Wild Turkey 101 Neat, because I know they have them. So I've become more and more of a fan of Wild Turkey 101. Um, I'm really intrigued with the Kentucky spirit. Supposedly the newer Kentucky spirits are out of this world. The old ones, it's like, which I have some, it's like, uh, might as well just get a wild turkey 101 and save a bunch of money. Right. So interesting. So if Jim Beam seven year old black beats wild turkey 101, let's see. Man, I love this stuff. It's so good. I went out last night uh, to a bar in Franklin, Indiana and had a Wild Turkey 101. That's actually pretty easy for me to pick. I'm going to pick the Jim Beam Black over the Wild Turkey 101. That does not surprise me um, because my palate really tends to appreciate Jim Beam products in general. So I'm going to put that right there. And I'm going to run a real quick synopsis right back through everything we've talked about. Wild Turkey 101, I'll take the Jim Beam Black. Evan Williams Bottle and Bond, I prefer over the Jim Beam New Black, but uh, in just the smallest, slightest, very, very close. Knob Creek, traditional Knob Creek, 100 proof, I do prefer because it's only because of the proof. Other than that, uh, the Jim Beam Black is fantastic. I prefer it over the Jim Beam Bonded. I prefer it over Buffalo Trace. I do prefer the Bakers, but not for the price. And I prefer it over the old Jim Beam Black product. Is this the best budget bourbon out there today? Uh, I don't think it is the best budget bourbon out there today because the price point between it and everyone's bottom and bond is pretty significant. Is it one of the best? At, you better believe it. It's one of the best. It's in the top three budget whiskeys on the market today. Write it down. Mark it down. Go get you a bottle. Put it in the comments and tell me if I'm right. Tell me if I'm crazy. If you don't like it, I'm sorry. But hey, drinking bourbon is supposed to be fun. Do it with your friends. Do it responsibly when you can. Do it blind. But whatever you do, don't drink and drive. We'll see you next time. If you drink, don't drive. Do the watermelon crumb.